this girl obviously was known to us as the family and you know had been a friend of our daughter and normally she'd been very friendly and this particular night first of all actually she wasn't invited but then she was a friend of somebody who was so I thought fair enough um, but but she didn't come anywhere near me and I thought I, it did register with me but there was lots of other people there as well and I was tired you know sometimes I get tired these days you know with maybe not being a hundred percent and so I left the party early and as I was walking out um, I passed her and she literally grabbed hold of my arm and said in a very almost excited way oh are you going now Julia and I, I just went it just registered and I thought Mm. Oh, horrible. But I, I, I just said, no, actually, I'm not. I'll be back in a minute. Because I thought, hmm. Not letting you have this one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To some degree, I did think that, yes. And then that night, I went home, and um, Richard came back, and he fell asleep. And, you know, I have to be perfectly honest in the actions that I took, because I don't think I would be alone in when suspicions are alerted that you, you want to really find out what's going on. Of even if it's to say nothing. Mm. There's an element part of you that wants to say, well, what is happening here? So he was snoring away and I got up and I went to his phone and I had a look at the messages and the first one that popped up was from her, which said, I ran after you as soon as you left. Where did you go? Oh, gosh, it must just break your heart. So did you confront him then? or, or there, Because I know there was another moment in Cornwall, wasn't there? Yes. So, so yeah. what, what, what was his reaction okay, to, the, to well, these moments? Okay, well, I did confront him because there were a few other messages on there. And uh, because it was relating to a medical matter, I thought that was rather suspicious given that I'm the one who used to be a nurse but that's where you see things start to really get to you because you sort of know you know there are things that appear suspicious and you have feelings and then all of a sudden someone's telling you don't be so ridiculous of course there's nothing going on and is that what he said to you yes he was I was just helping her out I went right okay but the but I, you know, it still stuck with me. And it was, the, it was that moment in Cornwall where that was sort of the defining moment, wasn't it? It was, really. It was a defining a moment in Cornwall. Richard come back from, came back from Qatar. I was already in the UK and we'd arranged to spend a week together, which we're really, really looking forward to. It's both of us. And we'd had a long journey down there and Richard had fallen asleep and he'd left his phone and literally as I passed it this message came through and it was from Lucy and it said you okay and I just went my stomach churned and I thought oh no uh, and then a picture of herself and I just went okay this is my moment I will pretend to be Richard and you replied saying no I I'm said, not no I'm not and it went on from there and it was very obvious then they had an extremely close relationship. But what's so weird about this then is that, so obviously the affair took place and then yes. from this moment you then go your, go your separate ways, you separate, you, you, can, you carry on. Um, but he wanted to get back with you. He didn't want the relationship to come to an end. Yes. So why do, do men or why did he act in such a destructive way when ultimately the result wasn't what he wanted? Yeah. I think there are several answers to this and, they, and there are parts to it. First of all, I think there's the initial panic of you know, being found out, what on earth have I done? Then you get the reaction of the person that you betrayed. In this case, it was me. Now, you know, of course I was angry and I was shocked because I, I really didn't expect that given how good we were at the time. Then. I didn't just fall back into place mm. and I think that was one of the key things that Richard found difficult that I just didn't say oh well never mind these things happen on we go that's not me and I couldn't do that so what I was looking for from him was actually you know the effort he put into wanting to maintain his marriage that's one thing on the other side when you're in a relationship that is of an affair, the likelihood is that, and I, I, I say this from the experience that I've had as a counsellor, the sex side comes into it in for the form of texts, in the forms of maybe sexually explicit pictures and photos, 
And that is extremely seductive to a man. On the, alongside that, you've get, then got the wife, so to speak, who is in a distressed state, who has, is angry at times, but is also in despair. And you've got two sides. You've got one woman who's like that, and you've got another woman who's actually being quite nurturing, you know, the shoulder to cry on. Uh, it must be awful. Hard to compete with, isn't it, that? It's difficult. It's really difficult. And I suspect for a man, they also find they are in the middle. And another thing I think was is a really important thing to say is, an affair is a secret situation. And a secret situation is, is about hiding. And hiding comes with lies. And the lies come from the lies to the wife, but also the lies to the mistress. The whole thing is steeped in it. And if anybody who's sort of the woman, if you like, in the third party in this, ever thinks that they are getting the truth, they really not. need to think again.